Son, and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. Well, good Friday morning. How are you doing today? Are you ready for the weekend? I know I am. I always get excited that worship time is coming. And I I try to never miss a church. And I hope you feel the same way. It's such a blessing in our lives. It sets things sets things straight, sets things and helps us focus on the way God would have us live our lives. Now, if you're at Saddleback, we'd love to have you come. Of course, breakfast and uh, our fellowship time it is served every before both services, which are at 9 and 11 a.m. If you're in another church, hallelujah, you go enjoy that church and that pastor's message that he has worked hard on, and he wants it to bless your life, and I know it will. But we'd love to see you also at Saddleback if you don't have a home church. We're at the end of the week, and we're ending our study of Mark chapter 8. I hope it's one now you'll remember the rest of your life. We've talked about such great life lessons, including yesterday. And uh, today we read the last paragraph, and I think there are two really important lessons to me that just stand out in this paragraph. I hope you see it too. I'm not even going to tell you what they are until after we read it. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples. And then he said, if anyone would come after me, in other words, follow me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and the gospel will save it. Boy, that seems backwards, doesn't it? But that's what Jesus is saying. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? Or, or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me, Jesus said, and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, then the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes to, in his Father's glory with the holy angels. You don't want Jesus to be ashamed of you. I know I don't. So how does he put that? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words. You know, there's times that we're talking with someone and it's almost as if we don't acknowledge that we're followers of Jesus. And rather than cause disruption or disturb the other person, we'll kind of just keep quiet. And I think that that's exactly what Jesus is addressing. That when the occasion is there and when the opportunity is there, we really are to acknowledge we are followers of Jesus. I remember one time, many, many years ago. And I was actually at a, at a Thanksgiving dinner at my uh, brother-in-law's home. And during the dinner, he says something to the effect of, can you believe it that there are actually people that believe God created the universe? And I I had to say, well, I can believe it because I am one of those. And I, I know that Jesus created everything you can see. And I know that because the Bible tells me so. Well, in that case, I don't know if he respected me for saying it. I know it was not warmly received, and I'm not sure we ever had many great conversations after that. But I also know that I was supposed to speak up for the truth. And at least on that occasion, I did. But there's been other times when I think I've kept, 
kept quiet and I'm and I'm sad for those. It's never something I want to do. I knew that when we started this show five plus years ago, that I'd be saying, I am a follower of Jesus and I'm going to put it out there every day. And I thought, I better live correctly then because people will know I am a follower of Christ. So actually it helps me, motivates me the way I live to try to live properly as God would want me to do. How about you? It's a challenging thing, isn't it? To not be overbearing with people, but at least let acknowledge that you are a follower of Christ. It's one of the great reasons I think it's good to invite people to church. Oh, you go to church? I haven't. Or if they say, I haven't gone to church in, in years. I used to go to church, you know, maybe prior to COVID, maybe prior to moving here. Who knows? Who knows? But I don't go anymore. Well, what a great time to ask them, well, why not? Nothing has changed. Jesus is still on his throne. Jesus still wants to be uh, praised and worshipped. Nothing has changed. That tells them that you are a follower of him. And Jesus will, then will never be ashamed of you. I thought the first part of that paragraph also was very interesting. What do you think? He says, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself. In other words, what? Put him, Jesus, the Lord, God, first in your life. And whenever you do that, then you're denying yourself something. But that's what he wants of us. The, I, I often quote the verse Matthew 6, 33 where Jesus talked on the money, he said, seek first the kingdom of God and then all these things will be given to you. And sometimes, you know, that's a, that's a true statement. But remember, he has all of eternity to fulfill it. So when we do deny ourselves, Put something in front of us. Maybe, you know, whenever you give to the Lord financially or with your time, you're sacrificing something, aren't you? But you're seeking first the kingdom of God. And then all these things will be added to you. It might not be till heaven. When you go to heaven or he comes for us. It might not be, but that's okay. It's Talk about having a kingdom attitude. That's what it is. That's what it is, that you deny. He must deny himself and tape up, take up his cross and follow me. And if that wasn't clear, he says, but whoever wants to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for me and the gospel will save it. He's pointing out, isn't he, in plain language, that the best way, the most profitable way to live your life is to live it for the Lord. And I just encourage you, you know, we talked about going to church. Well, there's more to walking the Christian life than just going to church. But it is part of it. And he doesn't want us to forsake the gathering of ourselves together. And he says it in Hebrew, the book of Hebrews. Now, the joyous Christian life is lived with him, not denying him, just enjoying his presence in your life. And I know you've experienced that, and I have too. And I'm so thankful for him and what he has done for me. And I look forward to celebrating that this Sunday. Don't you? I really do. Well, God bless. Thank you for joining me this week. Uh, we have another exciting week for you next week. I sure hope you'll be with us. God bless. Walk closely with your Lord this weekend. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him love.